<laughs> oh man, I'm excited about this one. Okay, today you're gonna get to see me learn how not to make an RC plane. It all started about a month ago. I think I need to make an RC plane. So I slung open my notebook and figured out what my goals should be. Yeah, that's better. Got things popping by hopping into the wing design. Went with an Epler 205 wing profile with an aspect ratio of about eight, which is unrelated to the specific type of airfoil. With these considerations, from my understanding, it should be able to fly at a slower speed with higher lift. And that's gonna be really important for this design since I'm just using normal PLA, which is way heavier than lightweight PLA, which is commonly used for these types of things. Place the wing toward the top of the fuselage so that it would have less tendency to rotate. We don't need any crazy turns or anything. I'm just trying to get this thing to fly. And if you don't know, the fuselage is the main body of the airplane that you slap all the other bits and bobs onto. Yeah, I've made some spots for mounting all the motors. And for the tail, I plan to have elevators and a rudder. But then I figured out about these things called rudder-vators. It's like a combination between the two. And that sounds way easier, so that's what I went with. I then moved on to how to actually 3D print the wing, and I watched Tom Stanton's video on this. I'll link it in the description. Really cool guy. But he wanted to design a wing that was printed with the base mode, which means it was only printed in one continuous strand. That makes the wing a lot lighter. So that's what I went with first. You can see it has this weird pattern on it. I don't know really what was up with that. But I was also curious of what it would be like if I just printed it how I normally do. So I designed another one, and this time, whenever it's printing, it will print by picking up the extruder and setting it down instead of one continuous. And it was really strong, hardly a weight difference, so I just went with that one. This was the really fun part. I got to start working with all the electronics. And I first wanted to see how much thrust this motor had or could give with this propeller, but it was a little tricky because I didn't realize this. That it's not just the shaft that turns. <laughs> Much better. Okay, we're on a roll now. <laughs> That's crazy, I don't know if I can hold that. Woo, that's scary. All right, I just got all these rods. That'll be used for the beam in the middle of the wing. And look at that. Wow, that's pretty. Wait, it's printed right. Whoa, wow, I actually expected that to fail. That's amazing. Wow, that's really cool. It fits pretty well. So this is the rear of the fuselage. I have a rod going to one of the rudder bears. And then the same thing on the other side. I think this is gonna work. <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh, I hope this thing flies. I got two of each of these three types of rods that I can use for the beam. I tried to put them in here. Just wanted to see how well they fit. And it looks like the largest one, the 7 16 It's too big. I don't think I'm going to use that one. But I think it would be a good idea to maybe use these two. So a quarter inch and the 3 eighths. 41 grams. 26 grams. Made a few weight calculations. <laughs> see if this thing would be light enough to fly. And I think it's going to. Nice. Looking good. That's what happened on the other one. I'll probably just glue it. See if this thing holds. So you know, I didn't realize it would happen until like right before it happened. 
I'm gonna work on actually mounting this motor permanently. <sighs> you can see I, I put the wires on the wrong side. They should be on the top, but I put them on the side. Whatever. Electronics on the inside has the battery. And then I put the propeller on there. Tighten this this time because apparently that's what that holds for. What do you know? It's perfect. And then it was time for the assembly. I dipped these things in paint so that I can mark out where it the holes. And got everything put together. I wanted to make sure it fits before I glued it. Started gluing everything. This is medium viscosity CA glue or super glue. Then I got these rods out and cut them to length. Put the motors in there. Control surfaces. These are the rotivators of the V tail. And I just use a piece of tape along top of all the control surfaces to keep them in place. Look at that. The back isn't closed because I turned it in base mode, but. That was amazing. This is where all the channels go. These wires go along the outside of the wing to the ones. It's not perfect, but it's hopefully good enough. And then the speed controller, battery. I think I'll wedge it in there with a sock. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, let me show you the So this is just one of the like that. And then up and down. And then so this should be a fit material. I think it's gonna work. Let's go try it. I think I'm gonna throw it. Just just one. Well yeah, this is the first test. Very separated. <laughs> At least now you have a better view of the inside. And the back is a little bit off center. But other than that, it should be able to fly. Post repair update. We've got this glued. We have the control rods for the rotorators connected back. None of this broke. I have the wings. Also got this fixed. Maybe good enough. There's a lot of glue on this thing. And I also realized that my controls were off. Not off, but incorrect. And I go this. That's just going to raise or to lower the plane. For the ailerons. And I need it to turn the plane so that we go a different direction. I think the rudder wheels can affect the yaw of this, they can affect the pitch like this, and then, yeah, the ailerons, they control the roll. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, I need to fix, I need to offset those, not have them go in the same direction. That should do it, let's see. Yep, they're not opposite. We're good. We gotta get the center of gravity fixed because the center of gravity and the center of lift are way different. The problem I had before was the battery. I think it was around here, but it was too far back apparently because you can see it was rotating about about, about that point, that axis, and that just made it pitch backward. I'm gonna place this in here, and then we should be ready for the second test flight. Okay, okay, there it is. Look at the bed right here with the paper towel on the other side. And then a snugly placed sock. 
it doesn't want to move at all. To make this more clear, the center of lift and the center of gravity should be at the same point to keep the plane from wanting to rotate. Ooh, that is top notch work. I think this thing will fly. One last thing before test two. 650. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Okay, take two. Don't go yet. Yeah, it landed kind of hard. Oh man, that was awesome. That was a lot of speed. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Where is? Where's the front? <laughs> oh no. It's gone. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> that thing was flying so fast. That's Did you know it was going to be that fast? <laughs> oh, baby, it flew. Man, did you see that? That was crazy. But here are the remains. Uh, yep, <laughs> it's very broken. The wing is still intact. The fuselage is broken right there. All of the wing is okay. Motors didn't come off. Ailerons are okay. We have a few sections. That one's right here. Now you can see it's section view. There you go. And those are the rudder vader controls. This glue stayed okay. This piece is <laughs> completely gone. Yeah, I'll stick it back together and try again, I guess. Oh, yeah. The propeller also broke. We'll see. Ooh, look at that. A lot of glue in some very important places. <laughs> so hopefully it doesn't come crashing down. I wouldn't be that surprised, but this could be the time. It's perfectly in line. <laughs> Let's do it. Take three. <laughs> Too, but I ordered more. Yeah, I, I was turning it a little bit both ways. Not, it wasn't perfect, but I think the the tail is too small, yeah. and it wasn't catching enough. It might have been a little too windy too, but I had to try it eventually. Wow, it's really separated. <laughs> the controller is even. Two of the controls came off. The propeller's fine, actually. Wow. Oh, that's surprising. Yeah. Sock is fine. It broke again right there. Mm. This is how I kept the battery in place. Mm. And, <laughs> and this is finally broken. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. What a flight. It actually went. 
the end of this one. <laughs> it's had too much glue. <laughs> well, this plane can only go through so many flights and add so much glue to it before I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> it, it needs a different design. It could use a lot less weight and I think a lot more area on the control surfaces for the V-tail. But let me know what you think because I'm not really sure. I don't know planes that well. But I learned a bunch from this and I hope you did too. And I'll end with this to give you something to think about. God starts with truth rooted in love. The devil starts with a lie. Jesus argues his points. He discusses them. The devil wants to distract you because he knows that you could find the truth. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And the devil wants you confused. He wants you to just sit in his lies. Don't let him. God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Listen to both sides of the argument. Look for truth and you'll find it. And most importantly, decide who Jesus is. He wasn't just a good teacher. Logically, that's not an option. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.